Lonzo Ball is going to be shut down for the rest of this season, which, man, oh man, can this guy just not stay healthy? He has played zero games this season for the Chicago Bulls, and it's gotten to the point where it just feels like he just might not be able to play the game of basketball for a long extended period of time at all because he's been in the league for six years now. This would be a sixth season, but he hasn't played this year. And the most he's ever played is 63 games in 2020. And other than that, it's been 55, 52, 47, 35, and zero. So big, big difference. He last year for the Bulls only played in 35 games and in in those games, he played 34 and a half minutes per game, which is actually quite a bit. He averaged 13 points, five assists, two steals, one block, and five and a half rebounds, while shooting a very high percentage from three, 42 and a half percent on seven and a half attempts per game, which is really good. His field goal percentage was 42 and a half percent, which is up from his career average. And his three point percentage, like I said, was at 42 and a half percent, which is up from his rookie year like 12%, which is insane because he shot 30.5% his rookie year, which is pretty bad. And in college, he was like a knockdown three-point shooter. So that was a little interesting when that happened, but it's really unfortunate. If we've looked at, look at all the games he's played, he's played in 252 games. 252 divided by 82 games, how many is a normal season. He's barely played over three seasons. And like I said, this is his sixth year since getting drafted. So If this is his sixth season and he's played just over three years in the NBA, three seasons, that's not good. Now, I know that 2020 was shortened and as well as 2021 was shortened as well, but still, he hasn't played a ton of games and it seems like he is always injured. I believe he had a hand injury and now this is like a knee injury. I'm going to look up like a list of his injuries and we'll we'll just see what happens there. So... This is from a torn meniscus back on January 14th of 2022. So it's been like 13 months now, well over a year, which is really unfortunate. It's been over 13 months. That's crazy. And from personal experience, I can talk about this. I tore my meniscus in, had to have been like July, I would guess. And I didn't really know it for like two days, and then after that, I was like, okay, something's definitely wrong, because my knee would click constantly, and it was really irritating, and then I got surgery on it in, it might have been October, it had to have been earlier than that, it was probably like September, October range, somewhere around there, and they were like, yeah, it'll be like a six-week recovery, it was not a six-week recovery at all, Um, I started playing right at the beginning of the basketball season, but it was tough, and it's taken a lot out of me. I can't jump as high. I could dunk really pretty pretty well, um, and now it's like maybe I'll get one a week or so. So, yeah, it's taken a lot out of me, and it's now February. It's been, like, since my surgery, it's been maybe six months, four, five months. I don't know, really, but it's still not the same, and it hurts a lot all the time, so... I, maybe I just need to take it, take time off because I I kind of like, it was like a month and a half or maybe a month. And then I just went straight into basketball season after my surgery. It was pretty quick. It must've been a month and a half because that's six weeks. So yeah, maybe once basketball season's over, it'll feel better, but I understand his pain. Like it's still, mine's still pretty bad. If I I fully extend my knee, not even like hyper extend, like fully extend, it's pretty painful, especially with weight on it. So like, I, I can feel his pain. Apparently, he still can't make cuts and things like that. So, I can definitely relate to him. I know it's one of the more, more minor injuries in your knee, but it is one that you basically can't fix because it doesn't heal on its own. So, uh, like like most of them don't. Like, ACL doesn't heal on its own, and all those other ones don't, obviously, either. That's why you get surgery on them. But it is, like, to the point where you can't like sew it back together because it's not going to heal you have to just trim around it and when you do that it like just makes it the tear bit bigger basically but it makes it so it is like a smooth tear instead of like a 
one that's jagged and it's going to catch and hurt you. So, yeah, it's it's never really going to be the same, which is unfortunate. Now, I don't know which knee it's in. He's a right-handed player, so if it's in his left knee, that is definitely worse for him. Um, but I, I don't know which knee it will be. Apparently, it's a foregone conclusion, and they will announce it after the All-Star break. The Bulls will, which, yeah, if, if there's been no updates and he still can't cut and run and stuff like that, I would be pretty surprised if he was able to make a comeback. And here we go. After evaluation, it was determined Ball had torn his meniscus, for which he underwent surgery. He was expected to be back in six to eight weeks. Same expectation range as me. And then he didn't come back. So with him not coming back, it obviously was pretty serious. We saw this kind of last year to a different injury with Kendrick Nunn when he just couldn't come back from that bone bruise in his knee, which I've also had a bone bruise in my knee, so um, I know that one. But, yeah, that one definitely was a weird one. Meniscus, definitely worse for me. And my my tear wasn't even, like, super significant. It was significant enough and in the right spot to where there's no blood flow, so I did have to get surgery, and they cut out the part that was, like, clicking and bothering me, and I couldn't run or jump, and it was pretty painful. But, like... I could live my everyday life, just not run or jump. So it obviously went and got surgery on it. And there's like, it's just, there's no way you could play for an extended period of time on it. So obviously he got surgery, I'm sure immediately, which I kind of did too. As soon as I had my pre, like my appointment with them, like they read off my MRI and stuff like that. He was like, all right, we're going to do it tomorrow morning. And I just went and got it the next morning. So that was pretty crazy. Um, not a bad recovery, honestly, at all. Just getting it back to what it used to be. I don't know if it'll ever be the same because I now, now I have less meniscus than I used to because I went cut around it, which, unfortunate, I would like to be able to jump how I used to be able to because I used to be able to throw down in warm-ups for games and now I cannot or I have one time this year. So it's pretty unfortunate. I wish I could the way I used to be able to. I hope he makes... A comeback because he was having a really good season for himself in last season I know 13 points per game isn't much but like that's a starting point guard level play and his defense is improving um getting a lot of steals getting like a block shot per game and then also he was shooting the three ball a lot better and kind of making an upward progression to maybe a 15 point per game score for his career which would be really good um but hey, he might be the brandon roy of this generation i know not as good as brandon roy because brandon roy was like an all-star level player but alonzo hasn't gotten to that quite yet but um probably the best comparison so i want to know your guys thoughts for sure about this whole situation in the comment section below don't forget to leave a like though subscribe and turn notification bell so all really appreciate it if you guys did that I'll see you guys later in the next video thank you guys for watching peace out my friends see you guys next time don't forget to subscribe